Hi, my name is Mike Zagadlo, and I'm the Chief of Police here at Lewis University. I'm going to spend about the next 10 minutes talking with you about public safety here on campus, the Lewis University Police Department, and how we all work together to keep our community safe here at Lewis. First thing I'd like to do is introduce you to our staff. So our police department here at Lewis University is comprised of sworn certified police officers who have the same capability, certification, authority, uh, training as a municipal police officer. So there's not this uh, idea that they're Paul Blart mall cop, they're actually real police officers uh, who work for the university um, and have all of the same competencies and capabilities of municipal police. Our sworn certified police officers are supported by our civilian campus safety officers. They wear a light blue uniform. Uh, they're not armed. They don't have arrest authority. Um, they work our dispatch center. Uh, so they answer the emergency calls for service throughout the day. They're here 24 hours. We're all here 24 hours a day, seven days a week, 365 days a year. But our CSOs serve as our dispatchers and our emergency call takers. They also support the police out on the street uh, by responding to calls for service, helping people who are locked out of their rooms and that kind of thing. We have a group of about 10 to 12 student officers called campus safety assistants that work with the police department and they uh, work our front desk, they do walking patrols of campus, they help with escorts um, and service calls additionally. The good news is we don't have a lot of crime on campus, so much of the time, much of the activity our officers engage in is proactive. We do a lot of community education and crime prevention programming. We have a number of nationally recognized training programs like ALICE and RAD, uh, which are active shooter survival and self-defense classes. Um, we train students on how to be on the lookout for students who may be in distress or may need assistance or may be on what we describe as the pathway to violence. As part of our overall violence prevention strategy, we do um, programming around personal safety and property safety and uh, all the things that you need to do to maintain safety and security in your environment. All that having been said, I tell students that the most powerful crime prevention tool we have available to us is our community. So the more connected you are, the more people you have looking out for you, and the more people you're looking out for, the more you people you care about and who care about you, the less crime we have on campus. So I encourage our students to connect with their RAs, connect with their peers, um, engage with the person sitting next to them in class, get to know people, uh, make those connections, because the more connections we have, the less crime we have on campus. I also think it's important for students to know that if they're ever in a situation where someone is in need of medical assistance because of a drug or alcohol overdose, I don't want them to have to think about whether or not they're going to get in trouble if they call the police department. So we have an immunity clause built into our student handbook that says if you do three things, if you call, stay, and cooperate, if you contact the police, remain on scene, and work with the first responders and cooperate with them, you're not going to be criminally prosecuted and you're not going to face disciplinary, um, adverse disciplinary actions uh, as long as you work within that program. And, uh, and as long as whatever's going on is reasonable, you know, if you've got a machine gun in your room and we show up, that might be a different story. But uh, as long as you stay uh, call, stay, and cooperate. Um, we're, we're not looking to write you a drinking ticket because you called an ambulance for uh, a student who needed medical attention because they drank too much alcohol. <clears throat> when I talk to students about crime, I, I describe this crime triangle, which, re which requires three ingredients for criminal activity to take place. The bad guy's got to be able to do the bad thing. The bad guy's got to want to do the bad thing. And then the bad guy's got to pre be presented with an opportunity to do the bad thing. We can work together as a community to affect that opportunity. We can take opportunities away by locking up our stuff, by looking out for each other, uh, by being situationally aware. We can minimize the opportunity for crime on campus. Uh, and all of that is better accomplished, as I mentioned previously, by having a, a close-knit community, by looking out for each other, by being connected, um, by working together to keep the community safe. The other thing I encourage students to do is to report suspicious behavior when they when they see it. We have a network of emergency call boxes and blue light phones on campus, so they're never far away from a button push that connects them directly to our 24-7 dispatch. Um, and if they don't use uh, an emergency phone, they can call us from their cell phone at 815-836-5911.
24 hours a day, 365 days a year, there's a live person answering that phone. So if you call at three o'clock in the morning on Christmas, you're going to talk to one of our campus safety officers. You're going to talk to a live person. You're not going to go into a phone tree. Um, so that is an important number, which I encourage students and parents to program into their cell phones um, so that they can contact us uh, without having to look up the number. A couple of housekeeping things. If, the, if students have cars on campus, they're required to have a permit. The good news is permits are free and they're very easy to obtain. Uh, all you have to do is log on to your My Lewis portal um, and register your car. Uh, there, the parking lots are divided by resident and commuter, so you'll either get a resident sticker or a commuter sticker. And then as long as they park in, in the appropriate lot, they don't have anything to worry about. Uh, the other thing I always tell students is there's always a place to park. Sometimes you'll hear from a student, I couldn't find a parking space. What that typically means is I couldn't find a convenient parking space or a parking space where I wanted one. Uh, but there's always a parking space for them. They sometimes have to walk three or four minutes from where they park their car to where they're going to have class or where they're going to get their meal. Um, and for some students, that's uh, that's a convenience that that's an inconvenience they're not willing to uh, to endure, so they park illegally and then they could get a ticket. So I always encourage students to, to park and leave. That's what I do with my car in the morning. I put it in the parking lot and I go wherever I go to my meetings. I, if I go to building from building to building, I do that on foot. It's a beautiful campus. It's we're a nationally recognized tree campus. We're technically an arboretum. Uh, so it's, it's lovely to walk around campus. It's good for your physical fitness, um, but there is always a place to park. They don't ever have to worry about not finding a parking space. They just might not find one that they find convenient. So to get that parking permit, they're going to go to their My Lewis portal and go into the resources tab and then uh, click on the little picture of the car that says parking permits. And that'll bring, a, bring them into our Permit Express system where they can register their vehicle, put in all their information. As soon as they complete that process, they'll immediately get an email in their inbox with a printable PDF file of a temporary permit. So they don't have to wait a week for the permit to come. It comes right to their inbox. They can print it and put it on their dashboard while they wait for the sticker to come in the mail. Um, and uh, as long as they have that temporary permit on their dashboard, they're going to be fine. And that temporary permit will last as long as it takes for them to get their uh, parking sticker in the mail, uh, which will come directly to whatever address they input in when they, when they create their account. All students are required to have a student identification card, which they can obtain at the police department central office in the LRC and LRG 32. Um, I like to kind of talk to parents about the Family Educational Rights and Privacy Act. FERPA is a good law that protects the privacy of student records. But what, you know, as a, as the, a parent of a college graduate, I'm familiar with how this works. When your student turns 18, their right to privacy supersedes your right to their records. So if you call uh, the registrar's office and say, I want to know my adult student's grade point average, the registrar is not going to share that information because that's a protected student record unless they have the permission of the student to do that. So what I would generally recommend is if you're trying to get information about student records, come in with your student, have your student on the phone with you. Um, that way we can talk to the student um, and you at the same time, and we have we get their permission to share that information. Now, there's some exceptions to that. So if there's a life safety risk or a threat to, of harm to self or others, um, we can share whatever we want whenever we want. If the student's under the age of 21 and they violate alcohol or drug policies on campus, the um, student conduct personnel will actually directly communicate with parents to let them know about that. But other than that, students' records uh, belong to them. And if they're over the age of 18, they have to give permission for those records to be shared uh, with anybody but them. We have what we call on campus a behavioral intervention team or a threat assessment team. We call ours the ACT, the assessment and care team. Um, and this is a group of individuals uh, linked uh, across multiple disciplines. So for instance, I'm on the team and I represent public safety. We have our director of counseling on the team, director of residence life, our uh, dean of students, our HR vice president are all part of this um, assessment and care team. And what we do is we let the community know that if they're concerned about someone or if someone need, they think someone is in distress or may need assistance or may be building towards doing something bad on campus, they can refer that student into the assessment and care team. And we'll look at that case and figure out how to connect that student with the resources that they may need. Um, they can 
submit an online anonymous referral by going to lewisu.edu backslash ACT. Um, and once they submit that form, we get alerts on our phones and we begin looking at how we can connect that student who needs resources with the resources they need. More information about the police department can be found at lewisu.edu backslash police, or you can scan the QR code that you see on your screen right now, and it'll take you to the LUPD website. I'd also encourage you to follow us on social media. We have a Facebook uh, page where we post lots of fun stuff, but there's also some good information, community alerts. Same thing with our Twitter um, Twitter account. We have our uh, YouTube channel where we post all kinds of educational videos and some fun videos. Uh, it's a great way to keep in touch with public safety on campus. And then, of course, you could follow us on Instagram for all of that same information. Appreciate your attention. Appreciate you trusting our your student to us. And uh, we look forward to you being part of the Flyer community. Thank you.